Welcome back, Murder Minions, to My Crime Diary. This is Marcus Pinney, your brand new host. <laughs> or not brand not brand new. Um, your host. Five episodes and in, we, actually. We have a very exciting news. For, we have a very... We... <sighs> we have a very exciting... We have a very... It's really like five words. We have me... What a, Aubrey's shy. Okay, anyway, we have Aubrey and Marcus here. Aubrey Hi. is the new co-host. Hi, of guys. Crime Diary. She'll be um, joining us hopefully every week if she can be on time. If she and... can figure out what she's doing. Obviously, has never done this before. I'll stop Why talking in third person Obviously, talking in third person. I said I'd stop. I'll stop. I'll stop. I do it when I'm nervous. Okay. So, sorry. <laughs> sorry we took off last week. We were getting everything set up with Aubrey, and we didn't want to continue on without her great assistance here so at the So true, so true. So this week, we have a very exciting case for you. Oh, yes. Molly Watson. Well, the murder of Molly Watson. We have I feel like I'm... Not matching my energy, or I'm not matching your energy. Is that what you're trying to say? not matching my energy. That's what I'm saying. Welcome back, guys. Murder minions. What do you... I, I can't do that. Yeah. Well... I think maybe my vibe is just probably Adderall'd up sometimes or ADHD'd up, like so, like hyper, you know. I just need to talk louder. Oh, am I not talking very loud? Well, okay, Aubrey will do better. Aubrey will do better. Oh, I'll do better. Sorry. Also, I'm in my dorm right now, so oh, I've yeah. never done. Aubrey is also in college. Oh yeah, Aubrey's in as college. I am I. We went she... to the same high school together. I go to University of. Arkansas. Mm. Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Okay. I'm a freshman. Um, I don't know what else to say. Did I say anything else? Um, she has cats. She I love cat cats. Lady. I have one cat that's my cat. And then we had another cat that showed up in our backyard. And before we had time to spay her, or like, yeah, it's spay for girls, right? Yeah. yeah, before we had time for that, she got knocked up and she had three babies. So we still have two of them. So now I have three cats. Now I'm going to be the cat lady. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Good to so, start. So, like we originally said, we have the murder of Molly Watson today for this mm -hmm. week. Okay. Do you want to like start? So, or? we can just jump right in. Jump right in. Okay. Perfect. So, do you want me to? So, once upon no, a time. No, you can like introduce it. You can introduce. Oh, oh, yeah. You had your whole little once upon a time script. You go with that. Yeah. Okay. So, once upon a time in a far, far away land, there was a man. Or wait, in Missouri. There was Maybe a don't man. make it sound like a fairy tale, though. Once upon a time in a There's dreamy a beautiful land, land. There was a beautiful misery. land of misery. And misery. a man was going down the road on August 27th, 20th. And he noticed a August little something 27th? out of place. I thought it was April. I think it was April. April 20th. She was found on August 27th. Might want to clear that one up. <laughs> when Sorry. a man was going down the road on April 27th, 20th. Now, Aubrey did more research about the front end of this case, so we're going to let her take the reins on this part. Yes. Okay. So it happened in Monroe County, Missouri. Um, it was a Friday night. Yep, Missouri, Missouri. That's a good little thing you did there. It was a Friday night in April 2018. Did I always say that? And this guy yeah. named Glenn McSparren was driving from his mom's house. Um, it was late at night, and he was driving on this, like, kind of back roadsy gravel road. And it was surrounded by woods, um, and they said that there was, like, a brook running through it. It's not incredibly relevant, but... Um, and he came across this, like, car pulled over on the side of the road. If you laugh at me like this the whole time, I will not be able to do it something. I'm sorry. There's, You're cutting out the cussing. I've decided I don't want to cuss. A brook. It's like a river. But, like, a small, I think. I don't really know what the difference is, but they have them in the Ozarks. They have them in Missouri. Missouri is the Ozarks, as is Arkansas. Oh. Well, I don't know. Don't. Okay. Okay, yeah. anyway. So, anyways, he saw a car pulled over on the side of the road, and um, this he saw this lady lying on the ground, and she had a gunshot wound to the back of her head from close range. 
Don't say pew. <laughs> That's so horrible. <laughs> and so he immediately called 911, and the dispatcher told him to check if there was a pulse on the body and see if um, she was still alive. And he said that, like, he already knew that she was very clearly not. The victim was um, Molly Watson. She She was dead. She was dead. How old was she? Do we know? I think she was in her thirties. I want to say, but I'm not. I think she was in her thirties. Oh, it has in your notes. She's a 35 year old lady from Missouri. And let's see if I'm missing anything before I continue. Okay. So after he called the dispatcher and everything, um, eventually the police came on, and um, they had basically immediately ruled out that it was a robbery gone wrong, um, because I think it was just the like the. Uh, aggression of the shot i could be making that up but it seemed personal is basically what they were saying and i don't think anything was stolen either um she was found with her wedding ring on and they also saw in the car that there was a marriage license for her and this man named hold on i'm blanking on his name jim. james addy um and come to find out by jim Oh, he went by Jim. Super important to know that. He went by Jim. Well, I referenced him as Jim the whole time, so. Okay. Also, I might refer to him as Addy or James throughout this, but I'm going to try to be consistent. We'll try to go with James. Jim, Addy, or James. All the same person. Jim or James. We'll just, we'll narrow it to that. Okay. Um, Also, their wedding, you know how I said that there was like a wedding ring on and um, they found like a marriage license. Their wedding was... She, Molly did have a previous marriage before James, but they did sadly get divorced. Um, and she was so <laughs> cutting that out when it did say, though, the four when we get to James and how he had been married four times, I was like, hmm, sounds familiar. But, um, while yeah, she was, while she was getting in the while she was in the process, she learned that she was pregnant and then she, oh. And her son's name is Declan. Okay, I didn't write that down, so her son Declan was born. It's a good name. Yeah, it is a good name. Oh, so she had a relationship after her first marriage that um, lasted five years to her childhood friend named Amber Brady. And um, so, oh, yeah, yeah I was they confused. did. confused. Is that a woman? Mm-hmm. I looked her up. Um, yeah, they didn't really explain the whole, like, bisexual, actually, probably. I guess. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, but Stand forward for 2018 was quite literally what six years ago. Six years ago. Um, but Amber had been quoted saying that she, or according to her, it was um, six years ago. Yeah, 24 minus 18. Okay, go. So Amber had said that they had begun dating before she. While she, okay, while Molly was still in a relationship with her first husband, and Amber was also in a relationship at the time, so they both started dating when they were both married, as she said, and um, they were just gal pals, but little special gal pals, yeah, um, no, (laughs) she said that (laughs) while she, while they were still dating, um, Molly had gotten a new job as. I don't know exactly what her job was, but she worked as like in a correctional center and there was someone working there um, names named James Addy, who later becomes her fiance. And they became spoiler, but they hit it off, I guess, because Amber caught she said that she caught them um, at like a motel one time, which made like, she didn't explain that she was like probably spying on them because I don't know how she was just like randomly showing up to a motel, but she caught them. And she said that that was quite disheartening. And, um, I think she caught them twice, actually, like another time as well. Stop that. Cut. Are you going to say that? (laughs) Um, but anyway, she fell in love with him and you can talk more about James. Okay. So after, once they started dating, they fell in love at very first sight and they, and Jason over here was 15 years older. James. Sorry. James, (laughs) James, James was 15 years older than Molly. And had been married four times already. So, 
Sounds like someone we know. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> no judgment, though. Well, except for judgment, I if, because I wonder if that. Oh, okay. I wonder if that followed the rule of like half your age plus seven. Isn't that like what you're allowed to date? Societally? Never heard that before. Societally, half your age plus seven. What's half my age? Oh, so I'm only allowed to date someone three years younger than me, or two years technically. I guess. Yeah. Two and a half. But they wouldn't be a lot legal, of so. math. Well, yeah, but that's a little like yeah. I'm eighteen. I'd okay. like to clarify so I don't sound like a creep here. Okay, okay. what? Okay. I think I was gonna make a joke, but I don't remember. Okay. Anyway, yes, he's been married four times, which is a little cray cray, but you know, each their own. No judgment. The news reporters or the investigators or what, but they talked to the wedding planner, um, at the time. And um the wedding planner had said that James was as she said, quite the opposite of Molly. Like, he was quiet, he didn't show much enthusiasm, and she said that he was kind of just the guy that seemed like he was just, like, along for the ride in their wedding (laughs) or marriage plans. And the family always said, like, he just had bad vibes, like, he could never look you in the eye. Yeah, so everyone hated him. So they both were madly in love, and they dated for a lot, a long time. They did for seven years before... They were finally going to get married, and Molly was very happy that she finally found the man of her dreams, and she wanted to spend the rest of her life with him. I guess she did. But, so... (laughs) That was so horrible. I forgot what you said. (laughs) Did you have that written written down? No. (laughs) I guess she did. (laughs) Okay, so even though... His last thing, though, was, like, saying to his... Their wedding plan or something he had said that she had said something about like how are y'all doing or whatever and the last thing he said was like that she was driving y'all crazy i think <sighs> God, men. So okay so also like aubrey said the family was also concerned because like they were just getting bad vibes from jim and um molly also paid for like all the trips that they went on together like they went to disney world and mexico and also, even when they were getting married, they weren't living together at the time. Well, when they so, were, like, planning their wedding, right? They never they moved never, together. Yeah. I said they never moved in together. But you said even w- during their marriage, but they never got married. I was well, just like, clarifying. Even planning their wedding, they were, never got to living together. So, despite the family's worries, in 2018, they decided... They were going to get engaged, and they started planning the wedding of their dreams, which was set for April 29th in 2018. And Molly said she had never been happier, and she was planning on the wedding to be Disney-themed, Disney adult. Yeah, they said it was really, like, cute. Wasn't it, like, gold-themed or something? mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, gold and burgundy? And she also had... She bought two different wedding dresses because she couldn't decide which one to go with. Yeah, like she did have the um, Disney wedding thing. And her family had said just like a little bit about her that she enjoyed singing. She was she liked making costumes. She posted video diaries on YouTube. I tried to find them. I couldn't find any videos, but she reminds maybe me. you've got to cut that one. Out. <laughs> um, or you can just like bleep her name. But you will be cutting out the burp that I just had. Um, anyways, her family said that she was also, she, she was excited, but they said she was nervous for the wedding. Um, like, she was a little bit, I think she was excited about it. But, yeah, I think it was more that she was worried that he had cold feet or, like, he didn't seem super interested. From her family, we get the vibe that, like, they really didn't like uh, James. They said that. You already said that. No, I know. I'm just reiterating okay now you can go okay now we'll get into the juicy juicy details (laughs) maybe don't make it (laughs) sound like that (laughs) okay so a few weeks before their special day um going back to the wedding planner that aubrey mentioned um molly went up to her and was like yo we need to reduce the people on the guest just like that she said yo and because exactly yeah and the reason why was because Jimmy Boy, his ex-wife. Okay, 
James or James, Jamie boy. Mm -hmm. And his ex-wife had been in a horrible car accident. She was on. Oh, wait, I didn't know he was in the car accident with her. No. So Jimmy boy and his ex-wife had been in a horrible car okay, accident. Jimmy we'll boy it. and his ex-wife. No, Jimmy boy's ex-wife. Jimmy boy's ex-wife was in a horrible car accident and she was on life support. And later died. I promise we're not as horrible died. as we sound because there's a catch. We won't get there yeah. yet though. Okay, so she told there? the planner that Jim was having a really hard time with the kids and his son and daughter um, that he had with the ex-wife. Can I interject going... real quick? I'm so sorry. Was the ex-wife set to be invited to the I don't wedding so. in the first place? Then why would like that matter as far well, as like if... cutting well, the people down? Well, I guess because like the kids... Would the kids not go because suddenly the ex-wife's in a car accident? Well, the kids are the ex-wife's kids. Well, yeah, but aren't they also the soon-to-be husband's kids, James? Well, yeah, but she's dying in the hospital. I don't think they'd want to go to the wedding. Oh, I guess that's true. They're like, that. Yeah, I'm not cussing on like, this. You're not my real mom. And now that their real mom is dead. Dead. That would be bad. They might okay. be a little spiteful. All right, keep going. Okay. So they were going through a hard time and that they were having to decide pretty quickly if they wanted to take the ex-wife off life support, which then would lead to her death. And then a couple weeks before the wedding, Jim, me boy, James, told Molly that they decided to remove her from life support and he needed to spend a couple days with his kids because they were just having a really stressful time and, you know, it sounds reasonable. In mm -hmm. hindsight mm -hmm. so Jim um, Molly also had a brother named Jim and he thought James was very sussy baka and Marcus. he thought he was very Gross. sus and he told Molly that she should look up online to see if like look up divorce records and see if James was actually getting divorced or if he was being sussy baka and lying if he was venting the family said that james couldn't even make eye contact like with them like he just gave bad vibes all around they did not trust him Sussy and like buck. even like up to like as they were sending out wedding invitations they were still like kind of nervous for molly because they did not like this guy he was a sketchy Sussy dude buck. and if y'all look up a picture of this guy he's got like one of those little porn stashes i think <laughs> but he's but he's like a ginger. No offense to gingers. But this guy. Full offense. Full offense. Full offense. <laughs> to him to alone. Gingers. Only to this guy. James oh, okay. is bad. Yeah. Okay. Spoiler. Okay, I don't have anything else to say. James is bad. Yep. Hot take. Okay. So, but at the same time that the wife was apparently taken off life support, Molly and her son were moving boxes into Jim's attic. Don't really know how the timing of all this was working out, but we'll get into that later. But so she was moving boxes of her and her son's stuff into Jim's attic. And because they were supposed to move into his house, like right after the wedding. So Which the week I just, of their wedding. It, but it just makes me wonder like who, why are you marrying someone if you don't even know how they are like to live with? I feel like there's a code of an order of things and that is not one of them from all of my vast experience and seeing marriages and all <laughs> okay does your mom know about this i told her today but I'm like very i no. <laughs> i like way down to it but no you're not sending her it i will send i will send more i was like yeah she just wants me to help him with this thing i don't know i guess Okay, so Jim and Molly, they went to the local courthouse to get their marriage license, and the court later said stead, said that he was, like, very sussy and, like, I bet You've he, got like, to stop saying he's weak, arms are sweaty. You, I don't know. Okay. Right. No, no, you don't anyway, know the words, or you just want to say the next line? I don't know the words. Oh, so sweaty. There's, what is it, like, 
marinara on his sauce on his something what? already. Something, there's uh, something spaghetti okay, on his sweater already. Oh my god! I feel like I'm not. I'm not making that up. There's something. It's something along those lines. Well, that's staying in. So. Oh, okay. The court also asked, like, when you were getting a marriage license, if he had ever been married before and how the marriage ended. And Oh, and he was all, like, James... weirded up by that. I did actually read that part. <laughs> yeah, and he was all like, what you mean, bro? And Well, okay. Then he signed the affidavit that said that he was legally able to marry Molly. Well, what he had said was the... that, like, he was, he was like, don't give me that face. He was like... What, like, I don't see how that's relevant here. I mean, isn't this around the same time that we figure out some about Miss Melanie Addy? Miss ex wife? So, they get the marriage license. So then, on April 28th, 2018, it was the day of Jim's daughter's prom, and she remembered that he came home very late that night, and but she said, like, everything was kind of normal, that nothing seemed like super out of the ordinary and when she asked why he was coming home so late he was like i was just throwing it back with my friends and throwing it back with his friends i'm these questions i'm actually asking because i don't really know about this but what (laughs) yeah he was just he was just hanging with the boys boys will be boys yeah because his daughter was he told his daughter because well and he was home late on her prom night like she was getting she was at home and then he got home later uh-huh. and then she was like where have you been and he was but like, like with my when boys. was her prom in this was her prom after this or before this i don't know well why was she yeah. home on prom night maybe she's boring you can't put that in there okay she i'm sure she's very nice. cool do we know her name uh I think I say it later somewhere in here, sideways. Okay. Continue along. So, they're woken up bright and early on the next morning to a <laughs> knock, knock, knock on their door. And so they run down. They're like, the milkman. But, uh, wait, wait. You need to provide some clarity. When or who knock? Who is knock, knock, knock knocking on there. what door? But who is... Who the front is, door. Of what door? Like, Who? Jim's house. And Jim's kids are the one that are hearing these knocking? And his... His... Another person in the house. Do the kids know if that other woman is in the house? Yeah, it's their mom. Okay, hold up. I'm so confused. Okay. You're not explaining this well. So, Jim... James gets home and his to his house. Yeah, but you just said Molly doesn't live there. kids live at. Okay, does... Is his ex-wife... Oh, is that why Molly doesn't live in the house? Well, I didn't Molly get that doesn't far. know that. Oh. How does she not know that? Does Melanie know that Molly exists? No. How is that working? I don't know. Because is Molly just never going to his house? Why are you getting mad at me? I'm not James. I'm not mad. I'm just curious. What in well, the Molly's world take... is that face I just made? Also, well, it's just weird because Molly is actively taking boxes into this house. And so I don't know how she's not crossing paths with any of the kids, any of Melanie or whatever, and how she's not like. Are well, are we positive kids? Melanie was in the house at the time? Yeah, because she's about to answer. She answers the door to the police. Why are the police there? I'm about to get there. Well, if they're there because the wife died, then the wife isn't putting boxes in. The wife? Molly was putting boxes in like. I meant Molly, like, okay, well, you just said Molly's actively putting boxes in while this is happening, so I'm just clarifying, because... Well, like, the time leading up to this knocking on the door, Molly's been putting boxes in the attic. Also, sorry, guys, if y'all can hear screaming in the background, I do live in a dorm with all girls, and there's a function tonight, so I just keep hearing people scream it, and I don't know if anyone else Okay, so, the police knock at the door that morning. And who opens the door? Boom. The ex-wife, or not ex-wife, the current wife, that's not getting divorced and isn't, wasn't in a car accident. Or on life support. Or actively yeah. dead. I think he's already said she was dead at this point, right? Yeah. So, okay. she later says that she was mind-boggled, and it made no sense at all, and it didn't seem right. 
This was not my life, Melanie said. But guess what? It was. Okay, I promise I'm not an idiot. Why is she mind-boggled? What is she mind-boggled about? What I'm about to say, the police tell her. Okay, well, maybe say that first before you say she's mind-boggled. This okay, is trial and error over here, guys. That is clear, so, I think. Quite evident. Melanie said, so, the police come to the door and they're like, does James Addy live here? And she's like, well, yes, he's in the bedroom. And then they were like, well, his wife was in a car accident or it was found dead this morning and she was oh. like what and then she was like yeah he was the, the police was like or yeah the police were like yeah did you not know and so but then, she's introducing herself as his wife okay well, no she's, she's she's just answering the door she was just answering the door and then the police were like what are you doing assuming about? that well why oh well i guess they are technically married because of the yeah that's what i'm saying how you can't legally get married again if you're actively already married right i think it's just like a are pretty you sure that was like a thing that no. happened in friends that like well phoebe's married and rachel got married to reed or not reed who am i thinking of reed i don't know rachel got married to ross you know and so then like Oh, like yeah, when they were drunk way. in like Las Vegas, well, yeah, maybe and they that were so was just the TV thing. or different states, different laws. I don't know. Friends is very real to me. They must okay. have been realistic. Okay, so later, Melanie says, "I don't know if anything is clear to the audience of what just happened in the last like ten minutes of this audio." Here, can I do a quick recap, just to clarify yeah. everything? Quick recap. Okay, guys. So, because Marcus is just such a awful explainer just kidding he's not okay so basically molly the future victim she was again not living in james's house at the time they're living separately planning on moving in after the wedding so molly is like bringing boxes over to james house we don't exactly know why presumably because she's eventually going to be moving in she has been bringing boxes in so then weeks later we find out you know, the girl that has supposed to have been in a car accident and then on life support and then died, as in James's ex-wife, is actually none of those things. He, She is his current wife. She is not dead and has not been in a car accident and is actively living in James's house. So one day, like weeks after Molly has been bringing in boxes, it's around the same time period, um, it is Melanie, quote-unquote ex-wife, with... James's two, James's and hers two kids, living at the house. They get a knock on the door. She goes down to get it. I think James is. Do we know where James is at the time? He's like off at work or something. We don't know. He's not there. I, I assume he's sleeping because it's very. It's early. Oh, J.K. It's early in the morning, so maybe James is still sleeping in the house. Regardless, they get a knock on knock on the door, and it's the police saying that his wife, quote unquote, as they say has been um, like in a car accident and, or not a car accident, I'm sorry, that she got shot and shot. died. Like, and this is Molly they're talking about. And remember, she had a wedding ring on when they found her and the marriage license in her car. So like by all accounts to them, she is his active wife. So then it's all scrambled because Melanie's sitting here like, mm, no, actually I'm his wife. And she doesn't know about Molly. And yeah, basically that's where we're at now. Insane. Good job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Melanie said that she never suspected that like anything was wrong with James and never would have thought he had like this completely different life going on at the same quiet quote unquote time. But she said he would get off work usually around 3 p.m. And then he'd get home around five. And she said- And she remember he's that. a correctional officer at this time, right? Yeah. At their like local police or jail, mm -hmm. I guess, or prison, correctional center. Something. Something to that and effect. And she would always ask, why would you late? And why are you late? And then he would just start an argument. And she didn't, she said that she like wouldn't want to get into it. So she would just like not ask questions. She'd like concede to whatever. Yeah. Always the winning's job. 
just shut up and go to the kitchen, make him a sandwich. It's really, do we know what Melanie did for a living? But yeah, okay. Melanie recalls that her and James, Melanie recalls that James had recently gone on a trip to Florida on a business quit. Trip? On business a quote trip. unquote, quote unquote business trip. Oh, that's so good. Please start saying quote unquote instead of start quote, end quote, because that actually gave me a little bit of a brain and aneurysm because you did it like four times in like four minutes. Anyways, peace, love. Okay. So in reality, he wasn't on a business trip, but he was with Molly and she recalls him going to Mexico with his friends. But guess what? Friends, quote unquote. With Molly. But he told her. He told Melanie that the trip was so nice to Mexico that he took her on the same exact trip. Like they went to the same resort and the people working there were like, hmm, perhaps. Or maybe he got like a coupon. Yeah, maybe he got like a buy one, get one free trip, a little BOGO thing. You know, I've never heard the phrase BOGO said out loud until like a week ago. And I've heard it about three times since then or many, many listeners. So James goes into questioning with the police and Melanie starts like looking through boxes in the house. Cause she's like, I need something to, ex- I need to find the missing piece in this puzzle. What is my life? <laughs> but she doesn't find anything. She doesn't find anything that would explain why her husband of 23 years was, had been having this completely different life. And so she went like in the garage, she went, all the places where they kept like boxes and she never could find anything. Melanie but, never found Molly's boxes that she was bringing in or were they James boxes? James's boxes. They were Molly's, but I'm, I'm about to get there. Okay. Well, you just said she never found anything. So you kind of made it sound she like it didn't a find anything. Done deal. But then last resort, she's like, maybe that maybe there's something in the attic. I feel like I so would look Melanie, there first. No offense to Melanie, but like, Duh. I feel like many people would have figured this out before she did. Yeah, well, just like, who's just having, like, boxes lying around their house? They're generally in the, the attic. It's, like, the ultimate, like, junk drawer. But it's the junk attic. Junk room. That was some really so good information. So she goes into the I attic, said. and then what does she find? All the boxes that Molly and her son had been moving in to their house because they were planning on moving in just you know, a couple days from now. And she like opens them up and there's like photo albums of all the trips that they've been on. And it just, she pretty much just like. Cause keep in mind, this was a seven year long, like they did it for seven years before they got married. Right. Yeah. Or like they were before he proposed. Yeah. To Molly. Yeah. So someone spoiled in the beginning, the police matched the tire tracks that were found at the crime scene to James's car. And, but that's not enough to like target demographic right now. Okay. <laughs> but so they bring him into questioning um, because obviously the first suspect's always the husband or the boyfriend. And so they found that he had a secondary phone and that's what he would use to talk to Molly on and police tracked down. Um, a you should add little and... like sound bites, like throughout it. Like you should play the two phones. Okay. <laughs> so the witness that found Molly, or they found a witness that was parked on the same road when Molly was murdered. Don't know why they didn't report it, but the witness a hundred like a hundred percent ID Jim James as the man that was with Molly. Yeah, and didn't and they also found. Like, didn't, uh, what's his name? Sorry. Um, the guy that originally found him, Glenn McSparren, he said that there were two cars on the scene, I think. It mentioned that in, like, one article I read, but not the other. Okay. Continue. Okay. So there was also a t-shirt found near the crime scene of Molly's body. True. And her blood was on it. And it was part... This part... No. Okay, so the ex... This is a little extra messed up for our viewers out there. Okay, so the shirt that was actually found near Molly's body, um, it was identified by James's daughter, Emma, 
because she was the one that actually made that t-shirt that was found. Ugh. So, anyway. Police. <laughs> Why was that sound? <laughs> a nice little anyway, man sound. Police. Right. They searched Molly's phone. They searched Molly's phone. They searched Molly's phone as well. <laughs> I really think you have, like, several personalities. And they found out that she was actually searching Melanie. That I'm quite sure of. I lost where I was. I really don't know what you're even talking about, to be honest with you. You said something about Melly, Melanie Addy. Oh, yeah. Molly was, Molly was searching. Once, they found, once the police found Molly's phone, they found out that she was actually searching for Melanie Addy's obituary. Because remember, she, Jim. Oh, James so she was like suspect that. about it. Yeah, she was like, James is sus. I sus saw what? Him then. Sus, sus, sussy what? Baca. And <laughs> because remember, James told Molly that Melanie had been taken off life support and was yeah, yeah, yeah. dead as I a do doorknob. Recall. I do recall. So finally, ballistics determined that the gun and ammunition belonged to Jim, and it was consistent with what he had in his home and what killed Molly or what the murder weapon was true, but there wasn't any evidence on the gun that matched to Molly. And there was no DNA on the t-shirt that was found. It was just confirmed to be his from his daughter. And this was in wait, this was in Molly's car. They found this or outside of the car outside. Okay. I wonder if that would like hold up on court though. Like just the, like if there's no like DNA evidence, I don't think so. Well, he gets convicted anyway, guys. Not to spoil Why anything. Why would you tell them that? Well, okay. Emily, not shocking. Emily it. decided to file for a divorce. Shockingly. As she after, should. A week Slay. after all this started happening. <laughs> and she later said that he was a pretty selfish person and he could be controlling and intimidating. And she also said that she believed that he was 100% guilty, despite his insistence that he was innocent and didn't commit the murder. And even his own daughter, Emma, said that she believed that her father was guilty of murder. Well, I mean, how can you not? Wait, so how many kids, real quick, are there between... There's Molly's son. Molly's son, uh, Declan. And then I don't then know about James's kids as much. James had... Two. Emma had we don't know the boy's name. Terrible researcher you are to soak that in real quick okay continue or not don't, don't continue Just okay so now flash forward oh my god was a Almost. Like, you're, you're what you're a sexual assault I'm i don't know about that, that one i don't, I'm gonna make I don't the, think that can go in i'm gonna make that the sign off for each of our episodes just so you go ear sexual assault i feel like that's not that bad i've always wondered like it's just do, funny like, when I came here, when I said ear rape for the first time, I was like, is that, like, offensive? I guess probably. Ear murder, perhaps, would be less offensive, oddly. Ear torture. Ear pain. I guess torture would be better, because... But I don't like the word murder torture. Murder would be it makes desensitizing. Me desensitizing? Is that you don't want to desensitize any of the murderous victims. But torture is okay to families. desensitize? Marcus, is that what you're saying? I feel like that has Torture doesn't matter? Like Torture definitely happens. Most like killers, like many a killers, torture their victims, and like many isn't killers. that like in uh, like a military tactic? I don't know. I'm very educated, guys. Torture. I think is a military tactic. It has been at least in the past. I know that much. Like not like officially. But, okay. Like, have you three ever seen Criminal Minds? Flash forward three years to the day that Molly was murdered. James stood trial in court for the murder of Molly Watson. Three days to the... What do you mean three, three days? Years. To the day? Oh, okay. Yeah. Stood trial. Yeah. Okay. So on April 26th, 2021 was the first day of his defense. And it, they really narrowed in on the fact that the infidelity doesn't make someone a murderer. And it's not illegal. Which is true, because if that were the case, then Molly would also be... Not to speak anything but highly of her, but she didn't have the best track record there. Because we'll remember that out. Okay, well, well, it's true. She did cheat on her first husband with that five year relationship, and then she cheated on the five year relationship of with Amber with uh, what's James. his face, James. 
Yeah, that's true. Okay. And, but the jury was also shown tons of pictures of Molly's body, and they actually listened mm. to the 911 call from the man that reported Glenn. the murder. McSparin, Good old think. Glenn. And they also showed the jury all the wedding supplies that Molly had been buying and various photo albums that I guess just to like show the everyone was looking forward to the wedding. But James, he wasn't. Well, he's not going to say that. Well, he's not going to say what that he was or was not looking forward to it. Was not. That's true. That would be pretty guiltifying on his end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the next day, um, Melanie took trial. I mean, took stand. So the next day, Melanie took stand at the trial of James, and she told the jury that against she had James, zero, yeah, against James, and told the jury that she had zero idea that her husband was involved in this seven-year relationship. And their daughter also testified that he got home between seven and ten p.m. that night. Molly was murdered between autopsy showed that she was murdered between 7 and 8 p.m. And oh, so, so that, he got home like right frame. after? Yeah. Yeah, because Glenn and... also did say it was dark when he found the body. We don't know exactly. I don't know exactly when he found it, though. Um, and then Emma also testified that the t-shirt was her father's and she made it for him. But the defense mm-hmm. was like, well, that doesn't mean that he killed her. What, well, it means she, he was there. And what if otherwise he was there? Well, maybe and it flew just, like, there. Just flew on its own. Maybe it like, got tied to a balloon. He floated over there. And then he was like, popped yeah. right there. And then just like happened to be there. That's exactly. true. That sounds reasonable. And the planner also test the wedding planner also testified against James and said that. Um, he was sketch. Melanie. Well, the wedding planner also testified against James and said that Molly had told her that James's ex-wife had recently died in a car crash, and which wasn't true, but like she's cor- corroborating. Corroborating? Corroborating? Corroborating. I think it's corroborating, yeah. right? Corroborating. That's weird. Word. What did Molly? What Molly had been telling people? Yeah. Oh wait, no. The ballistics was presented and it connected. It said that the twenty-two al. 22 caliber gun that James had matched the bullet that was used to kill Molly. Oh, okay. So and I guess like police fu- searched his house and had found that gun, correct? Yeah, but he was also a correctional officer, so he had a gun. Mm, that's true, and there's probably like a special gun that correctional officers use. Well, that doesn't mean that the o- right. like the gun that well, I don't think correctional officers do carry guns. I don't know. Two jail inmates testified Holy. against James and said that James told them I put someone's face down in a ditch while he was serving time in jail before his bail was um like before they actually yeah like on I forget what it's called but like whatever good point okay they said that. and so the third the third day of trial nothing really happened and the prosecution and def- defense both rested their case against Jim James and he also declined to take the stand in the trial. So the prosecution really went in on James and said that he threw Molly away like a piece of garbage and that his motive was to clearly cover up his very in-depth double life that he was trying to continue on. And they presented the theory that Molly learned the truth about James and his marriage and that she couldn't find any evidence online of Melanie's obituary and that she confronted him, and then that he later shot her in the head and chose his wife over his fiance, Who also ended up testifying against him. He really did plan that one out real well. Mm-hmm. By the way, Sarah, so on the I'm exact, almost done. Sorry. So on the exact day, Jim and Molly would have had their third, an- third wedding anniversary. The jury found James guilty of first-degree murder and armed criminal action, and he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole for the murder charge and then an additional 20 years served for the armed criminal action charge. And wasn't it like three life sentences or did I make that up? I thought it was like three life sentences or something. No, he just got charged with three something. Oh, okay. 
But, but is he spending life? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Plus 20 years. Yeah, he rotten there. <laughs> and so, even today, he claims that he was innocent and he's hopeful to um, appeal his conviction. And the prosecutors gave a statement following the sentencing and said, Justice had been served today. James Addy will never be released from prison in the state of Missouri. His accident destroyed two families, the family of his victim, Molly Watson, and his own. While nothing can bring Miss Watson back to her family who loved her very much, society can send the strong message that violent crime will not be tolerated. Murderers will face prosecution and justice. Wait, is there anything and else to... Um... Really, the only thing left is Molly's son, during the impact statements, he said, he told James, you took one of the most important people in my life away from me. She was an amazing, smart, beautiful person. And that's the story. May she rest in of peace? Molly Watson. So guys, that was our very first episode with Aubrey. Woo. If only there was a thumbs down button. I think there is, actually. Or you can just like... I don't know. Not listen. But anyway, guys, I need you to go smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. You need to go right now to Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, all of the Spotify platforms that you listen on. You mean all of the podcasts? Which she said. Yeah, it's really okay. Sorry, he's yelling at you. But anyway, we'll see y'all next week, which we haven't decided yet, but we will. And that's it. Wow, what a sweat. I know. <laughs>